ATP. So next slide, please. So it's been estimated that ATP turnover rate is as high as 65 kilograms per day at rest, and it can go up to even 200 kilograms a day. And here is the graph, Doug already mentioned, the tissues that have the highest ATP demand. So how can mitochondria possibly produce this much ATP per day in the human body, 65 kilograms? Um, so here, it, I will say that this is due to a very unique and beautiful structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria are made up of the two membranes, the outer membrane uh, in dark blue, the, the inner membrane in light blue, and the, then the Christi membranes, which are invaginations from the inner membrane in yellow. Uh, the, you can see that the densely packed Christi membrane shown here will greatly increase the surface area uh, to accommodate all the protein machineries that is necessary for the electron transport chain shown below. Um, and these curvatures, they're so tight, they're less than 10 nanometers. Uh, what makes it possible is the uh, existence of cardiolipin shown in red uh, in that schematic. And cardiolipin is a unique phospholipid that is of bacterial origin, and it has a conical structure. So it helps bend the membranes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So while cardiolipin is really important for bioenergetics when it is on the inner membrane, uh, it is also in an area where the electron chain can leak electrons and cause the production of reactive oxygen species, and that will cause lipid peroxidation. When that happens, when cardiolipin is peroxidized, it will degrade, and so you will have a degradation of the Christie membranes. And on top of it, oxidized cardiolipin will translocate from the inner membrane to the outer mitochondria membrane. So the first thing that happens is that with the loss of the Christie membranes, you have less ATP production. But beyond that, the cardiolipin sitting on the outer membrane will represent a danger molecule to the rest of the cell. Uh, so what happens now is this cardiolipin can interact with ER membranes and start the process of mitophagy and even autophagy. Uh, we know that oxidized cardiolipin will also cause the release of cytochrome C, which then leads to the in initiation of the apoptosome to mediate apoptosis. And finally, more recently, it's been greatly appreciated that oxidized cardiolipin will form a docking station for NLRP3, ASC, and IL8, uh, and I, uh, a caspase 1 uh, to initiate inflammasome activation. And inflammasome activation is now appreciated to take place in aging, which is also called inflammaging, uh, and to be the und uh, underlie the, patho uh, the pathology of many age-related diseases. Next slide, please. So here are just some examples to show you how Christi membranes can be lost in aging. On the left, uh, uh, might have, uh, transmission EM uh, taken from young mice, uh, cardiac and retina mitochondria from young mice, and you can see a lot of dense Christie membranes. However, when mice get to be about two years old, you will see that there is now no clear definition of Christie membranes in many of the mitochondria, not all, but many. Uh, and yet the interior, the, in, um, the inner mitochondria re, uh, membrane remains intact, but it's just a loss of Christi membranes. The same is actually seen in heart failure. This is cardiac mitochondria uh, from a, a human with heart failure, and you see the loss of Christi membrane. And it has now been shown that this is associated <laughs> with loss of cardiolipin content. And finally, you see examples from Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, with loss of Christi membranes, but intact in the mitochondria membrane. Uh, next slide, please. So these studies would suggest, uh, would suggest that it is really important to try to repair cardiolipin uh, content and restore these Christi membranes if we are to restore bioenergetics. So we've been very fortunate. We discovered a series of small peptides. They've been called the Cetoschiller peptides. Uh, and SS31 is probably the, the most studied example of them all. 
Uh, SS31 was shown to specifically target to the inner mitochondrial membrane, bind to cardiolipin, and prevent the peroxidation of cardiolipin. So you will see that this would now prevent the uh, collapse of the Christi membranes. And there are studies that have shown that treatment with SS31 can prevent this cardiolipin uh, oxidation and loss of Christi membranes. But there are even studies to show that we can even repair uh, the loss of cardiolipin uh, in aging animals and restore the normal mitochondria uh, architecture. Next slide, please. So here, here's just the examples. Um, on the left side is pretreatment, prophylactic protection of kidney mitochondria in ischemia. Uh, which is shown that you have loss of Christi membranes and treatment with SS31 preserves them. Uh, in a model of type 2 diabetes that is caused by high fat diet, there's also a loss of Christi membranes in kidney tubular mitochondria uh, and they are preserved if the SS31 is given. Interestingly, this is even when SS31 does not alter blood glucose levels. Uh, and then on the right side are the aging studies where old animals show this loss of Christi membranes and two months treatment of SS31 started in late life can now restore Christi architecture. Next slide, please. And so if you follow this schematic and this understanding, then treatment with SS31 should be able to prevent all this downstream cascade of events that can lead to aging as well as age-related pathologies. Uh, next slide, please. So I will simply summarize quickly uh, what all the studies have shown. There are numerous studies by many investigators where with the treatment of SS31 uh, in animal studies and in humans, that we're able to optimize ATP production and reduce ROS production. And this is ROS production. This is simply by promoting electron transfer. Uh, and in doing so, SS31 has been shown to inhibit all types of cell death in stress-mediated uh, models, such as ischemia. Uh, it is also shown to attenuate inflammation by downregulating any uh, release of NF-kappa B, TNF-alpha, and the interleukins. Uh, in aging animals, they've been shown to reduce senescent cells. Uh, in uh, tissue damage, they can promote cellular repair and promote, accelerate the regeneration of kidney cells, for example. Uh, they've also been shown to uh, promote uh, cellular metabolism by upregulating CERT-T1 and MPK kinase. Um, they can improve organ function, and in vivo efficacy has been shown in numerous age-related chronic diseases. So finally, I will simply come back to what um, Doug ended up saying, is that mitochondria dysfunction may well be the centerpiece in the hallmarks of aging, uh, because clearly with insufficient energy, uh, one can expect altered cell-cell uh, interaction, you can expect loss of proteostasis, uh, uh, induction of cell uh, cycle arrest and senescence, exhaustion of stem cells. Uh, and um, so this is where, you know, I think that I would uh, go along with many of the authors in the paper that, uh, that Thomas mentioned at the beginning, that we think mitochondria dysfunction lies, you know, center amongst all the hallmarks of aging. Thank you. Hi guys, thank you very much. 